the heap shows us the memory consumption and how objects are organized in memory. The heap will also help us to understand how to work with references. On the left side we can see a class called person and it has a constructor person. Moreover we have the main function down there which we need to execute our program code. And I place the heap over here at the right side. The heap owns a column for some address. Each address will be placed into the memory. We have also another column where we will enter variable names if we know them, because not every object has a name. Furthermore, I will put the type of a specific variable in this column. And the last column over here will be used to enter the content of a variable. And I divided this column in value and reference. We will only use the column for value. If we have a primitive variable, So let's write the word primitive at the top of this column. We will use the column reference only if we have the instance of an object or complex data types. A variable will never have a value and a reference at the same time, so we will use only one of both columns. Now let's start with the program execution. The main function is the location where a program starts. And if we execute a function, we will get a new entry in the memory because of this variable called args. Args will be created in an empty slot of the memory. Args will be passed to the main function. We can use the pass variable args in the body of the main function. So now we are in line 6. And this is the location where we start with the execution. args is a variable of the type string array. And a string array is a complex data type, so we will enter something into the reference column. And in this special case, we have a non-defined string array, so we will write zero into the reference column, because we have no idea where args points to, because this array is empty. When args has been filled with some strings, we are ready to execute the next line. This line is divided into a calculating zone where we call the constructor of the class person and we use the variable Anna to save the address of the object that we have created at the right side. The program will execute the right part first. So first of all, we execute new person Anna. If we want to create a new instance of the class person, and I will keep one row empty just to get a better overview, the memory will create a new memory cell to save an object of the type person. and member variables of the class person are always up there. And we will always enter the default name and the default content of all member variables. The class person owns the member variable mname. 
So we take the next free memory cell of the memory to save the variable m name that has the type string into it. The type string is the only type that can have an entry in the reference column and an entry in the value column. Because string is something like a hybrid. A string variable that is not defined but declared has the content zero. Therefore I write zero in the reference column. If we define a variable m name, the zero will disappear and we will get a specific value in the value column. So far we created an instance of person in the memory. Now let's draw a frame around this instance, because we know all this stuff belongs together. It belongs to the class person. That can be found in the memory at address 102. Now we've created the member variable mname. mname is an instance of the class person. And the next step is to call the constructor. So we call new person and we put Anna into the constructor. The constructor can be found at line 3. This constructor has a similar behavior like a common method and it has one input value. And for every input variable of a method there appears a new memory cell in the memory. So let me keep one line empty. The variable a name has the type string. And this variable gets its input down there and the input is Anna. So the value is Anna. Therefore, I write Anna into the value column and don't use the reference column. Only declared strings can have several characters in the value column. So far, we, re we reserved the transfer parameter a name in the memory. Now we are ready to execute the next line. Line 4 does the following. M name equals a name. The variable m name has the value Anna. So the value of m name is also Anna now. Therefore we switch to the value column. Now we are ready with line 4, so we go further to line 5. This is the end of the method. Every variable that has been created in the body of the function are temporary variables. If we leave a function, temporary variables and also transfer parameters like a name will be removed from the memory. After leaving the constructor, we go back there. And now we are ready to declare the variable Anna. It gets the address of the new created person object. So we get a new variable called Anna in the memory. And it has the type person. and it gets the address of this created object. This object has been created over here. It is a red frame at address 102. Therefore, we write 102 into the reference column. And every time we address Anna with a dot operator, 
it is clear it will be looked up for the variable Anna, which points to an object with the address 102. And if I want to address the name using Anna.mName, then I get out right here, because the variable mName is a member variable of an object which is located at the address 102.